Hey everybody, this is Adam back for Titan in the Deep, the uh, MESBG YouTube channel based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Actually, today we are in uh, right outside of Charlottesville, Virginia. So you guys, uh, the surrounding that I've got going on today, staying on a big old lake. It's absolutely beautiful out here. Got a little fishing in yesterday, which is a good time. Got a uh, about a three pound largemouth and a uh, about a pound smallmouth. It's kind of awesome. Anyway, but uh, hey, we're back for uh, video number three out of six in our series with the uh, defense of the North Legendary Legions. We've already done the assault on Lothlorien was video number one. Check that out on the YouTube channel. Army number two was uh, Army of Dell, and today we're going to be talking about the fell beings of Mirkwood. I'm pretty excited about this one. This is a pretty cool, if not a little niche, uh, uh, Legendary Legion that came out of the Defense of the North supplement. Uh, so anyway, we're just going to get right into it, uh, give with the pros and the cons, tell you what all is available in the Army, and uh, I don't know, maybe a list of some of the stuff you can take in it, you know. Anyway, alright, so uh, let's get things started here, y'all. Um, first off, the beings, or the fell beings of Mirkwood. So this is what all you have available to you. Uh, well, actually, let's go over the special rules first. Additional rules are a fell beings of Mirkwood force must always include Razgoosh, war leader of the north, who is always the army's leader. That's one important thing, you have to take Razgoosh. He's the new Mordor hero along with, uh, what was the other one? I don't even remember the other one's name. Hold on a second, I'll tell you. Uh, Musger. Oh yeah, he's the guy that leads the assault on Lothlorien. One. Or well, not necessarily. But you'll have to look up the video to see that. Alright, so anyway. Uh, these are the special rules for the army. Uh, through the forest, friendly infantry models gain the woodland creature special rule, which is pretty cool. There's some really cool stuff that um, uh, that you can uh, take advantage of with that <clears throat> in this list that we'll get to. Uh, let's see, death to the elves. Friendly models gain the hatred elf special rule. That's pretty crazy. Any elf players that run into this are going to be not having a good time. It's going to be dealing with just regular little six-point orcs, five and six-point orcs. That can absolutely shred their their elves pretty quickly. Uh, the war leader Razgoosh gains a plus one to his fight value when engaged with an enemy elf model. Not his hero, any elf model. So anyway, um, this is uh, that's pretty much the special rules for it. They're kind of themey, obviously. Uh, we're going with these guys are trying to kill elves because um, they're advancing on uh, you know Mirkwood and Lothlorien. So anyway, <clears throat> let's get to who all is available in the army. The named heroes. Uh, you only have two. You have Razgoosh, the war leader of the north, and if you're not familiar with him, he is not not bad. I think he's, a, I don't know, pretty balanced, but maybe a little overcosted for 110 points. He's Orc Mordor, infantry hero, hero of valor. He's move 6, fight 5, 4 plus to hit. Strength 4, d7, 3 attacks, 3 wounds, 5 courage, 3 might, 3 will, 1 fate. Uh, war leader of the north is one of his special roles. Razgoosh may only include, may only include, Orc Warriors, Warg Riders, Giant Spiders, Mirkwood Spiders, Fell Wargs, and Bat Swarms in his Warband. Additionally, Orc Captains, Orc Warriors, and Warg Riders in the same army as Razgoosh gain the Hatred Elf Special Rule, which is kind of cool. So that's Captains, Orc Captains, Orc Warriors, and Warg Riders in the same army gain Hatred Elf, which that can be pretty helpful if you have a lot of elves in your your area's meta or if you play tournaments have a lot of elves in them. Um, anyway so his war gear is a heavy armor bone breaker and a shield I forgot to mention that a uh, bone breaker is a mace uh, additionally enemy models do not receive any bonus for an elven made weapon when fighting against Razgoosh so elven made weapons from Amdur all the way to any elf hero whatever Aegeus or whatever the hell the name of the sword or the uh, Gilglad's uh, spear is um, none of those get their, their bonus, the, the three plus bonus, um, for being elven made. Um, however, I would imagine that the, uh, Master Forge still do. But, uh, anyway, his heroic actions are heroic strike and strength. Strike's important, because he's only 5-5. Five five. Uh, he has special rules of hatred elf and elf bane. So when he does damage, he does D3 wounds when he does wounds, which is brutal to elves. So, Beast of Mirkwood, orc captains in the same army as Razgoosh, 
may include bat swarms, Mirkwood spiders, giant spiders, and fell wargs in their war band as if they were in from the Mordor army list. All right, I'm not going to lie. My buddy Lee, he loved this when he saw it. Honestly, I hate it because you've already got bat swarms in Moria and in in uh, the Mirkwood, like the uh, dark denizens of Mirkwood army. And I was okay with those two, one from the Lord of the Rings, one from the Hobbit, but now you gave Mordor bat swarms. I really am not a big fan. Anyway, but uh, that's the only thing I don't like about this. That, the rest of it's pretty cool. He's got a decent profile. Um, I think it's kind of weird that they gave him a mace because a mace on a fight five strength four hero seems a little, I don't know, a little redundant, maybe a little pointless because you're not going to use bash with it really. I mean, strength four is cool and everything. But, I mean, bash with a guy that can do this kind of damage. Three attacks. I don't know. It's just weird. Anyway, so let's get on to the uh, who all who all else we have less than this. Uh, who else is in this one? Uh, the other dark denizens of Mirkwood. Um, we also have access to the Spider Queen. Uh, let me just find her real quick. <clears throat> and if you've never played with or against the Spider Queen, she's pretty solid. Uh, she's 115 points. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, this is again. This is the, there's only two named heroes in this entire uh, in this entire uh, uh, legendary legion. So the Spider Queen is 115 points. Spider, Mirkwood, Monster, Monster, Infantry, Hero, Hero, of Valor. She's moved 10, fight six, six plex to hit, strength six, D4, two attacks, three wounds, four courage. Three might, three will, zero fate. Uh, her war gear is large venomous fangs. Her heroic actions are heroic strike and heroic defense. Defense is important for her because she has uh, zero fate and she's D4. She's super squishy, but like the definition of a glass tank, basically. Or glass cannon, I'm sorry. Uh, her special rules are monstrous charge, which is very helpful for her. Uh, swift movement, which is terrifying for having monstrous charge. Terror and venom. So she is... Very, very dangerous when she wins fights. Very dangerous. Uh, her, uh, she has one other weird little special rule. It's an active ability called uh, Progeny? 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 I think. Yeah, Progeny. Anyway, um, when called upon, the children of the Spider, wing, spider Queen burst forth from her nest that they're built on her back towards what she has deemed as easy prey. During any point during her move phase, the Spider Queen may expend any number of remaining will points to summon a broodling. For each will point expended this way, place a single broodling base anywhere within three inches of the Spider Queen, but not in base contact with any enemy models. Broodlings may move and charge on a turn in which they were summoned. Broodlings are not counted when working out if a force is broken or not. A broodling is a Spider Mirkwood Infantry Warrior. Move 10, fight 2, 6 plus to hit. They don't shoot anything, so it doesn't matter. Uh, 3 strength, 3 defense, 1 attack, 1 wound, 2 courage. It's just a pile of spiders, basically. A little, little pile of spiders. Um, they're uh, interesting little dudes, but she can do some pretty cool pretty cool little tactics with her. You can like instantly surround somebody with something if uh, you're not having to take a bunch of courage chests because their courage checks are uh, courage too. But anyway, um, she can surround stuff pretty quickly, and with that fight 6, strength 6... Rerolling all wounds because of venom and monstrous charge. I mean, she gets three attacks on the charge. So when you knock something down, you're getting six with rerolls on strength six. She's going to kill a lot of stuff. But again, she's super susceptible to bow fire, so you got to keep her hidden constantly. Anyway, um, so uh, let's get on to the rest of the army here. Um, so those are your two named heroes. Now, you don't have to take the Spider Queen again. Razgush is the only, um, he's the only, it must include for this Legendary Legion. You also have Orc Captains. They're 40 points. You can give them a Warg for 10, Orc Bow for 5, Shield for 5. Orc Shamans, they're 50. With a Warg, they're 60. You also have the Orc Taskmaster. He's 50 points. You can have Orc Drummers. They're 30 points. And that's all your heroes. Orc drummers, you know, I mean, they basically just add infantry, get three inches, cav, get plus five, if they fly, they get plus five. Uh, movement to their inches, or shoot, inches to their movement. <laughs> I cannot talk straight today, I'm sorry, I have to apologize all the weird stuff that I say. Anyway, all the warriors they have access to are actually pretty cool. Um, they have just your basic orc warriors, but again, they all have hatred elf, which is kind of awesome. They're five points base, they can get a banner for 25, 
They can have one point each. They can have either uh, orc bow, shield, spear, or two-handed weapon, just like any other Mordor, Angmar, whatever orc. Uh, you're, you have access to Warg Riders. They're 11 points base. They can have a banner for 25. Um, orc Bow 1, Shield 1, Throwing Spears 1. Uh, you have access to Orc Trackers for 5. You can put them on a Warg for 7. So it bumps you up to 12. It's not bad. Merkwood Spiders. Devastating, devastating spiders. They're absolutely awesome. They're 20 points. Giant Spiders are also 20 points. Now, hardly as dangerous as Merkwood Spiders or as dangerous in a different way. Have fell wargs for eight, not nine. I noticed that. I thought that was interesting because it feels like fell wargs are nine points in like the dark denizens list. Let me check real quick. I really feel like they are. Oh, maybe not. Maybe they're not even listed. I feel like in the uh, armies of the Lord of the Rings, the fell wargs. Uh, let me see. Maybe they're just in the hob. They're in the Hobbit listed. Uh, I'm gonna find them real quick. Oh no, never mind. They're just eight points. I don't know what I'm talking about. I might even edit this out. Anyway, <laughs> so fell wargs are eight points. Bat swarms are 35 points. All right, so you got some pretty cool uh, tools to work with with this legendary legion box. Like it's it's pretty cool. They got a lot of stuff in it. So um, let's just get to the pros and cons. Uh, let's see the pros. I think uh, Razgush is a is a dangerous, uh, very dangerous leader against the elves. Um, his hatred plus elf bane is pretty nasty. Again, he's only fight five, but he's fight six whenever he's fighting an elf. So that's pretty cool. I mean, that makes him a pretty formidable warrior, especially strength four, d seven. I mean, he's he's doing some he's doing some damage, especially to d six. He's wounded on uh, fives um, against d six. Uh, he's wounded on fours against elves that are d six or lower. Um, anyway, so he can do some damage, especially three attacks, um, with all the stuff that he has access to. I mean, you're basically going to surround him with a bat swarm or some warg riders, orc trackers on warg, just whatever to get a little bit of cavalry bonus with him. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's got some good stuff. Uh, there's not a lot of really great rules in this army. That's one of the weird things about it. Um, uh, again, I'll get to the cons in a minute. Anyway, so, um, I think, uh, another really big positive is you have access to bat swarms, both of the big spider warriors, uh, Mirkwood and giant spiders. For example, the assault on Lothlorien only has giant spiders. You don't have Mirkwood spiders. Mirkwood spiders are fantastic. I mean, paralyzing on a five plus is crazy, crazy strong. I mean, you can do that, um, you're, if you do that to like, a, like an Aragorn, he has to spend fate points to keep himself from being paralyzed. And it's an 8 inch range. It hits on a 5 plus, but I mean, that's 33% of the time. You're going to be able to paralyze somebody from 8 inches away. That's crazy. They have a 10 inch movement, so they can just move all over the place. They have swift movement, so they can run up the side of a wall on top of a building where their, uh, their line of sight is highly obscured by your opponent's. Or your opponent's line of sight to them is highly obscured. You can really like put them in some weird spots where they're hard to hit and they get really easy shots. Uh, Merkwood spiders are really good. The only bad thing about them is they have massive 60 millimeter bases. Um, they're like the same size as like a uh, um, a uh, like a Isengard troll um, or the Balrog, which is nuts. Giant spiders, however, not. They're 40 millimeter bases, which is the same as any cav or cave troll. Um, same as the bat swarms and the fell wargs. I mean, they all have big bases. Except for their, um, except for their orc warriors, their basic orc warriors, and then your basic trackers if you bring them. Um, so anyway, again, Merkwood spiders are fantastic. Uh, one of the things I think is interesting about this is all of your orc captains can now lead beasts, just like Razgur. So you could essentially have an entire beast army if you wanted, just a metric ton of fell wargs, a couple of war riders, a uh, banner or two with the war riders. By the way. I would give, if you're not going to go like a bunch of spam with your orcs and you're going to go like a highly mobile list, I would go war riders with banners. Um, they're actually pretty solid. They actually give you a little bit more space. They're three inches, obviously, because they're, it's from the edge of their base is where it's measured. So uh, when you measure a the base of a banner on a 40 millimeter uh, base rather than a 25, then you get just a little bit more space, you know, from it. Um, so I like, I actually like running banners on war riders. Um, I think they're, they're pretty good. And plus they're way more mobile. So you can get a 10 inch movement banner. So you got like a huge, like essentially a 16 inch window of where you can put your banner for your most important fights. And you especially want to do that with your spiders. Um, cause everything in your list is fight three, except for your giant spiders and they're fight four. Um, 
you know, and then obviously your captain, your orc captains and your spider queen and Razgush are higher. Um, so uh, you have this. This can be a very fast army. Um, I think it's really cool that they inclu included the war orc drummer. Um, and, and every single creature with infantry in the keyword gets woodland creature. So, I mean, you can just fly through forests with absolutely with ease. Um, so you have the orc taskmaster, orc taskmaster, which is cool. On a four plus, um, if one of your captains or heroes called a heroic move, a heroic combat, or I'm sorry, heroic move, heroic march, or heroic shoot, one of those three, on a four plus, they get it for free if they're within, I think, three inches of the orc taskmaster. It might be six inches. Let me check and make sure. I think it might be six inches. Uh, let's see. It's within six inches of the Taskmaster. Taskmaster. Good lord. So I just cannot talk today, y'all. Anyway, um, so within six inches of him, if you call a heroic move, a heroic march, or a heroic shoot, then you can basically get it for free on a four plus. No might points suspended. So you can move a tremendous amount of space across the board. So what you would do is call a heroic march and then drum with your drummer and every single one of your orcs including your war riders, which is kind of cool. Hey, this is uh, the, the march, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, the drumming doesn't include your spiders because it's just just for the um, Mordor orcs. So you would get your captains, uh, Razgoosh, uh, your war riders, your orc trackers, your orc shaman, all those guys, anything with a Mordor orc in their title um, would essentially get to, get to use the drum. So your infantry would go an extra three inches, they would go from six to nine, and then all of your war riders would go from 10 inches to 15. Um, so you can get you can cover almost half the board in on one turn with a drum. And if you march, you get an additional five inches for your cav, and you get an additional three for your uh, infantry. So you're moving all of your infantry 12 inches. If you march and drum, and you're moving your war riders 20 inches, which is bananas. You can cover literally half the board in one turn, depending on where your deployment was. So you, if your army gets separated by some weird maelstrom thing, you can get them together really fast. Um, that's pretty cool. Another thing I really like that's kind of sneaky about this list is your fell wargs are now really, really dangerous. They not only have fell sight, but they also have woodland creature. So you can run them behind a building, directly through a forest, and hit something from 10 inches away if you don't have line of sight. No matter, your opponent has to be extremely careful where they place everything. And then you can just peek a spider around a corner or something and then rush them in it too because all the, your spiders all have swift movement. So they can just go barreling through stuff too with, with absolutely no problem. Um, and they do get an advantage of the heroic march, so they would they would go an additional three inches because they're infantry. But anyway, I don't know, kind of some cool little janky things about this uh, about this legendary legion I like. The woodland creature is an interesting add, um, I think, because well, I play on a lot of terrain. I love playing a big terrain boards that are just loaded with terrain. And I play like big monsters and stuff a lot too because I play Mori all the time. You, if you've seen my channel, you've seen the dragon and the cave drakes and the balrog. I mean, I love them. They're, they're my favorite things to play with. But um, this, I think, will be a really fun army to play because of everything you get access to. So um, anyway, again, the Taskmasters are a really cool uh, advantage. Uh, it's cool that everything has hatred elf. So if you end up playing a lot of elves in your meta, you can really, really cut through them pretty quickly. Um, the Spider Queen, again, is absolutely lethal in experienced hands. Um, I know uh, Kim from Kim's Painting Corner, he used to be uh, Drums in the Deep uh, before he lost his uh, YouTube channel. He has a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, games with his Spider Queen, and man, she is like really scary to deal with. I mean, the D4 is brutal, but um, everything else about her is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, she's really cool. She, she's one of the, uh, Shelob has survival instinct, so she's like, eh. You know, you, should, you can get one lucky wound on her, she's going to bail, but I mean, she does have five wills, so she's probably going to stick around at least one. But the Spider Queen just has her three wounds. She doesn't have any fate, but she has, uh, you know, she, she can do some damage and she doesn't have survival instinct. So no, I like her. And then also, um, you have, you have just a, a great amount of, of troop options, which is cool. Again, you've got, you know, you got like the, the all the orcs with their, all their stuff. You got the war riders, the trackers that can possibly have wards. You got the two spiders, the fell wargs and the bat swarms. The bat swarms are going to help you deal with a lot of, you know, big, big, powerful heroes and stuff. Um, Anyway, uh, you don't have a war horn, but you do have the orc shaman um, who has fury or mortal orc. Um, this will also catch your war riders, which is pretty cool. So your war riders, riders essentially within six inches of your orc shaman will be fearless, and you can give your war orc shaman a warg also. So um, 
you know, again, it's pretty cool. So you can kind of give them the six plus save if you do a fury on your uh, on your fury orc. Uh, so yeah, it's got some cool stuff with it. Your trackers, your war riders, and your orcs are all going to be, and your captains are all going to have the six plus save, and they'll be fearless essentially within six inches of him. So if you have a lot of fear or a lot of terror in your uh, in your meta, or you play in tournaments that have a lot in it, and then there you go. And um, that's a really good way to help take care of that and mitigate it. Anyway, um, orc trackers are some of the best shooters. Um, Evil has to offer. They're four plus to hit. Um, put them on wargs, and they're a great skirmish force because um, they're hitting on fives even after they move. Um, so they got a. They're pretty. This is a decent horde army with um, with a lot of punch. Um, it's. Uh, I don't think it's really like any other army outside of the. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. Like if you look at Dunlin, Dunlin has that weird thing where their their hatred Rohan. It's like okay, so if you play against Rohan, out of you know however many people in your list or whatever or in your area have Rohan forces, um, yeah, that's cool and everything. But that's pretty rare. But I mean, you'll play a lot of elves. Like in our meta in Nashville, we have a couple of elf players. I have a couple that like to play the Last Alliance and I have a couple that are really big into Rivendell. Uh, my buddy Josh loves his Rivendell knights. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, all right, let's get to some of the, the cons about this list, too, uh, this Legendary Legion. Uh, Razgush is good, but he's not a great leader. I mean, I think he's he's solid. I'm not, still, he's not up there with, like, Shagrat or anything. You know I mean? I think Shagrat is probably considerably better. Um, just because he's got the three fate, and he's got the knockdown bonus and everything from his shield. Um, I think he's a little expensive for 110 points. Uh, again, strength five, he would have been significantly better. You know, um, but... Uh, yeah, it's, that's reserved for a lot of unique situations, I guess, like Azog or something. But anyway, um, a mace on strength four uh, and a three attack hero is kind of weird. That's what I was saying a little while ago. I mean, I don't know. Like, Bash is a great ability, but uh, it's mainly just for warriors, in my opinion, you know. Um, anyway, again, it's uh, thematic special rules. So they're cool and everything, but it's nothing groundbreaking. You can technically kind of run this list with uh, Mordor and the uh, Dark Denizens of Mirkwood as an alliance, and you get access of everything in Mordor, um, except Razgush, he has all of his restrictions on the type of troops that he can lead, which obviously we've already went over that. Um, you don't have any low, any war horns, so no access to any courage buffers, but you, and it's a very low courage army. I think the highest is your giant spiders at three courage. Pretty much everybody else, if they're not a hero, and I think they're hero, or even the heroes are only courage three except for Razgush and the Spider Queen. I think the Spider Queen's four and Razgush is four or five, or five. Everybody else is pretty much two. Um, and again, Giant Spiders, I think, are three. But, um, and uh, another big thing is uh, there's no serious magic whatsoever in this list. I mean, you have your your Orc Shamans, that's it. So you got a five plus Transfix and a three plus Fury, I think. Which again, you're definitely gonna channel that sucker. But um, I don't know, there's some cool stuff you can do with this list. I like it. I think it's interesting. Um, again, super thematic. Uh, cool. But uh, nothing groundbreaking here. You know, nothing completely different. I, I still think uh, from everything we've reviewed, uh, the three we've reviewed so far, Assault on Lothlorien has some, that's going to change some metas. It's so good. Like, it is a very, very dangerous army. Very dangerous army. Um, I've seen some battle reports on it. And I think uh, some people... When people figure out how to play it, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to beat. Um, anyway, this I like it a lot. I think there's some really good lists you can run with this uh, with this army, um, and I think if you're playing against, I think it's reasonably competitive, not great. Like it's not gonna be like a, it's not a tier one competitive list, but maybe tier two, possibly tier three. Um, it's not up there with like the Black Riders or anything, clearly. Um, but uh, it does have some good stuff in it. I mean, you have again, it has a decent horde potential. You can get a lot of orcs in it, and you can back them up with spiders and your fell wargs that are bursting through things, uh, through forests. Um, I, re I, I think the fell side ability is highly underrated. Um, if you've ever played with it or against it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But you think like, oh, you've got this guy, like your, your banner, your captain is sitting just around a building, and you think he's out. It's like, oh, nothing can see him. And then you got a fell warg on the other side of the building that is within seven and a half inches, and it smashes right into him. And all of a sudden, your captain, your banners, in serious trouble because you have a. It's only fight three, but I mean, it's a strength four warg, you know. Anyway, then again, the spiders are always nasty. I love giant spiders. I think with Ashrak, they're absolutely terrifying. And just in this list, they're good, but not amazing. Um, anyway, 
yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think about it? Uh, I think a good 500 point list would be Razgoosh and a metric ton of beasts. I mean, just load him out with a couple of bat swarms, a couple of Mirkwood spiders, a couple of giant spiders, and then some war griders. Um, if you're going to be playing more than 500 points, uh, up around 700, I think you add the spider queen. Over 800, I think you start looking at your other things like your taskmaster and things like that to really like to buff out the force. Um, you can, again, play this, this army as a horde style army or you can go spider heavy and warg heavy and make it more of a dark denizens list that has a really powerful uh, combo leader between Razgoosh and the spider queen. Um, anyway, I think it's going to have a little trouble against maybe some some uh, some magic armies, but a lot of other armies do. You know how that is. Um, they're not going to be having too much trouble against elves because again, that plus one to to wound elves is going to be nasty. They win a fight, they're probably going to kill an elf. Um, and you're going to outnumber almost any elf army unless you take a really heavy spider army. Anyway, but again, spiders are going to be nasty against them too because you got you got giant spiders, Mirkwood spiders that can. That can paralyze, Mirkwoods can paralyze, and then giant spiders are fight four, but they're already strength five. So if you're going against, you know, fight or strength, I'm sorry, defense uh, six elves, which most elves are because most everybody gives them shields, then you're looking at, uh, you know, fives to wound normally, fours with two attacks. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in this. I think you're going to, if you combo your war riders and your spiders, you're going to end up knocking a lot of people down. A lot of guys down, and if you do, you're going to start shredding armies if you can do that. That's a that's a heavy point investment, basically a war rider and a giant spider running together. But um, you can knock out you can knock out some flanks with that. Anyway, I guess that's my take on uh, take on the uh, fell beings of Mirkwood. I don't uh, I don't really have much else to add. I'm, I think it's a cool themey army, and uh, I'd like to hear what you guys have to, th to say about it. Um, I don't know. Uh, add in the comment section uh, what you think you think it's a uh, viable contender in tournaments if any of you guys have played it yet because I haven't seen any battle reports with it yet but I'm planning on putting a bunch of these up whenever I get back to Nashville um, in a couple of weeks uh, still on tour uh, yeah we got a couple shows left in Virginia and then we're back in Nashville in about a week and I uh, should be around Nashville for about a month or a month and a half so hopefully gonna get together with some people and get some games in I know I'm gonna be playing in a small tournament in Nashville um, I think it's on July 23rd or something so that'll be fun. If any of you guys are around, love to see you there. Uh, come by and say hi. Uh, or just get into the tournament. My buddy uh, uh, Ezra is going to be throwing it. Um, but anyway, thanks again. I appreciate you guys for hanging out today. Tell me what you think about the video. Tell me what you think about the army. If you've played it, all that mess. i uh, love to hear from you. Anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic evening. It's been absolutely awesome getting to hang out with everybody. And uh, thanks for checking out the channel. Please like and subscribe and uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, um, it's been great day. I hope uh, wherever your day's at, it's awesome. God bless y'all. Thanks.